everybody. Courtney and TJ here. Thanks for hanging out with us on a Monday night. How you doing, TJ? I'm doing all right. I'm ready to, to get this fight started. <laughs> all right. We got an epic showdown tonight uh, between TJ, who is an SEO and content marketing whiz and has been working with real estate agents for a really long time, uh, and myself, who is a professional Facebook advertiser who lives in PPC life. Uh, primarily for real estate agents I've been doing a long time. So we kind of thought it would be fun. We talk a lot of smack amongst ourselves, all in good respect and good fun. For the record, TJ and I are good friends, so this is all meant to be fun and helpful. Uh, but what we're going to do tonight is TJ is going to throw down with me on all the reasons why I do is a waste of time or not better than other choices you can make for your business. Uh, the, the end of the day here, we get a lot of questions from people about, should I be doing this or should I be doing this? And our answer is make a choice. They're both valuable. Uh, it depends on your objectives and how you want to go about getting there and really how you like to spend your time uh, or your money because it's either your time or somebody else's you're paying for, right? So the purpose of this is to help you kind of see the difference between the two. Uh, tonight, I'm on the, the punching bag for uh, Facebook PPC and next week, TJ will be on the bag for uh, SEO and content. So feel free to, to throw your ideas for that for next week. Uh, so tonight, TJ has come up with a list of things he finds in Facebook groups or Google or whatever of all the reasons he wants to hate on what I do for a living. <laughs> but all Why the good PPC? And I can take it because I uh, believe in what I do. So I can, I'm, I'm ready, TJ. Hit me with your best shot. I'm ready. All right. All right, here we go. So the first thing, and this is the chief complaint I get from everybody when we talk about this, is why is PPC so expensive? Why does it have to cost me this much money? What do you got? Uh, well, first of all, Jason, I too am missing Monday Night Football, <laughs> and my fantasy team is about to go down in flames for the week. So thanks for hanging out with us. Mad respect there, Jason. Uh, but anyway, so why is it? Put up a better fight than the Monday Night Game is. So in the history of real estate, PPC is actually one of the least expensive lead gen ideas you could ever, we've ever had in real estate. Um, if you think back to even five, 10 years ago, what realtors used to do to get business, which was door knocking, which is an hourly rate for, for an agent, right? What are they not doing while they're door knocking? So you have an hourly rate. We're talking about driving all over town, knocking on the doors of expired listings. We're talking about cold calling. We're talking about sending out mailers month after month after month after month, never having any idea what their true return on investment is. Uh, we were talking in the group today about uh, the, the football calendar magnets. I love them to death, but as far as tracking your return, you have no idea. So basically what you do is take a $5 bill and drop it in a mailbox and pray. That's a really difficult thing to track, and it's a really different, difficult thing to make a decision of whether you're actually seeing any return on that. So with Facebook advertising, I can tell you to the penny which ad brought you a sale, how much we paid for that lead, where they looked at the ad, how, what time. Like I know all of those things. So ultimately, while there is some cost to the trial and error process, you will get to a point that you're going to know what your leads are going to cost, and you can decide how much you're spending. If your lead, let's say we find your leads cost 15 bucks a day, and you're like, I want a lead a day. Okay, so you spend 15 dollars a day. You don't have to be spending thousands a month. Uh, you know, full disclosure, there are some markets where you've got some mega teams duking a lot of money into Facebook advertising, and it can be a little challenging to compete with them. But if you're doing it well, and you're doing it in a way that people are finding value in, and they're clicking on it, and you're building a good rapport with your market, then ultimately Facebook's going to reward you for that, and your cost is actually going to go down. So the trick to keeping it being affordable is doing it well, and making sure that you're making good choices so that Facebook sees that you're utilizing its, its products to the best of its ability. Facebook ultimately wants to reward quality because they can they want Facebook to continue to be the powerhouse. So if they start selling crappy ads, you know, people are going to stop hanging out on Facebook. It's that simple. So it doesn't have to be expensive. There is incremental cost per lead forever. You know, I get that. But you can spend as much or as little as you want. You just have to work towards getting the biggest return on that investment as you want. I'm glad you took I'm it off from that $5 dollar. We're talking about more than that. But that takes me to the next point that you kind of brought up already. There is a, a learning curve here. It takes a while to get good at this. And you have to pay to play. You have to pay to learn how, you know, what an audience is, how to define yours, 
what you know the the best creative that's going to work for you visuals or, or even copy uh, and every lesson that you need to learn in that stuff uh, you have to run ads to learn it it's gonna you got to pay to play and pay to learn and pay to fail i don't like that part mm -hmm. about ppc that is fair uh facebook advertising is not simple but it is actually pretty easy uh, it's the complication of Facebook advertising is there's a lot of different levers to pull and there are right ways and wrong ways to pull those levers in combination. So the best way to see a solid ROI is to learn to do it properly. Uh, you know, there's training programs out there that will take you start to finish. This is what to do. You know, you see a good idea in a Facebook group, ask whoever put out the idea. How did you do this? Can you screenshot your targeting? Uh, you know, how long did you run this? You know, people will pop out these results. I got 50 leads in two days. Okay, that's not enough. And for even a screenshot of the ad is not enough information. So there is a learning curve to it. But if you take the time to learn to do it properly, it's actually really fun to learn. It's the trialing process that's really fun. Uh, getting to the point that you start to see those results coming in because you pull the right lever. Uh, it's, it actually can be fun. You know, those of us that, that that's how we spend our days. I love my work. I love it. When I see those leads start flowing for my clients, it is like, it's like an adrenaline rush. Uh, because I know I put $10 in and 10 leads came out. Like it's like a, a slot or what do you call it? A slot machine at Vegas. Uh, you know, there's really, it takes time to learn. I'm not going to BS that. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat that. It is not an easy thing to do. And I actually encourage the agents that I come across that are not doing it correctly, that they need to back off and stop spending their money until they learn. Uh, because you're just taking up a $5 bill and crumbling it and handing it to Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, it's not it's not something you should do unless you know how to do it. And it's not hard, but, you know, you got to seek resources and seek training and, and make sure that you're not necessarily following other agents as much as you're following the success of those agents and learning to customize it for your own market. Because what works in California might so not work in so Texas. Wonderful. All right. Are we talking right, about we taking talking about a, week, a weekend uh, and just, you know, boot camping it and learning everything, immersing it with, with a book or a set of training videos or something um, or, or what? You know, how long do I spend before I can start to, to actually spend money and, and get some leads in? You will know you're ready when you sit down to start your first campaign or how, whatever campaign you are in your process. You will know you're ready when you stop seeing levers that you don't know what they mean. Because there's probably 50 that you pull, not to mention setting up the audience. Uh, and if you're going through that process and you come across something that you don't know what it means, you need to go forth and find what it means. Um, I will tell you, I'm a full time Facebook advertiser and I spend hours and hours every week on training just trying to make sure that I'm up to date. Because sometimes those levers change and then you open it up and you're like, what the heck, Facebook? Um, but they're always working towards making it better. You just need to stay up to date. Yeah. But actually, again, you're leading me to my next point. So this takes constant learning, constant maintenance, constant improvement. You can't ever, you know, push play and walk away like so many people like to, to claim that they can do with their PPC campaigns. But it doesn't actually work that way because your budget will dry up or the audience will move on or Facebook will make some change and you get nabbed and, and left behind. Uh, there's never a day or week that goes by that you can't spend uh, you know, you, you don't have to spend some time in there kind of changing things up and, and optimizing and stuff. Uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a time suck, isn't it? Um, not necessarily. If you're touching your ads every day, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, you know, Facebook does take time to optimize. And, you know, most of my clients, even my coaching, my advertising coaching clients, uh, we talk about once a week that you actually make any changes because you have to give Facebook time to correct. So if you're touching them every day, you're actually doing a lot of disservice to your own campaigns. Uh, you know, you make a change, a change, one change at a time so that you can let Facebook then optimize. So no, it doesn't have to be a daily thing. You know, you should be checking on them because I mean, who hands a $5 bill to somebody without checking where it's going? Uh, you know, making sure that they're, they're funneling out properly and, and that, you know, Facebook spent your money the day before. And, but for the most part, unless you're building a new campaign or it needs a total update for some reason, it, it shouldn't be more than a few minutes a day. And like your website, Facebook, it's working for you 24 seven. Like even when you're out showing houses or you're at open houses or whatever it is that you're doing, Facebook's still working for you. And it's saying, hey, come work with Jason. Hey, come work with Jason. Hey, come work with Jason. You're not doing that. You hit go and Facebook is doing that work for you because uh, you told them who you wanted and how you wanted them. So, you know, that work has already been done and it's just doing its thing. 
So Jason's got a really good point here. Speaking of come work with Jason is uh, talking about AB testing and how a lot of agents forget about that or, or don't know that it's important in the first place. Uh, and that's, that's universally true, Jason. I think that's, that's true for anybody, uh, ads or any other your vehicle. But one thing I'm going to throw at you, Courtney, I'm going to push back a little bit. You keep using this $5 uh, analogy. I think you see, you've got to call that like at least a $20 analogy, major analogy. You know, you're going to get with some agents and there's no way I can spend five bucks and get results out of that. So, I don't know, maybe we talk about a couple of 20s instead of that, that fiver next time. <laughs> well, I mean, I start almost all of my campaigns at $5 a day, TJ, because I don't- Yeah, you start there. I don't want to sink a lot of money into them until I'm sure what's working. And in some markets, you're going to get a lead every day for five bucks. And for a lot of agents, they're going to be stoked about that, especially when they're super fabulous, high quality leads because they've optimized properly for them. Um, in other markets, they might cost you 15, 20, 25. And if you want a lead every day, you got to spend 25 bucks a day. Uh, that's something you only have so much control over. It's a competitive bidding environment. So if you've got other agents in your market that you're bidding against, it might be higher. Uh, that's just something you're not going to know until you test it. Like if you normally are getting $10 leads and all of a sudden your campaign is getting $50 leads, something's wrong with the campaign. Uh, so that's, that's the kind of thing as you, as time goes on and you learn your market and you learn what works in your market, uh, you're going to get to know that number and you can budget accordingly. Uh, I would say most of most of my clients that are have like a couple of layers of retargeting and they're running a couple of different ads at a time, um, excluding listing marketing, that's kind of a different thing, trying to sell your own listing. Uh, probably 25 to $30 a day, most of them, uh, and are seeing solid results. So, you know, it just varies market to market, unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely. So Ian's got a real good question here too. So there's a lot of folks out there that are only advertising on weekends, say, or you know, whatever the case may be. He's talking about Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, what do I do if you're saying I shouldn't uh, shouldn't adjust it more than once a week, but I only run it for three days of that week? Do I need to let it run for two or three weeks so I have a total of seven or more days to work with? How does that how does that work? Uh, Ian, why are you only advertising three days a week? What kind of ads are they that that's the results that you've? Were, let, you, were you told to do that by a trainer at some point, or are they open house ads, or why are you only running them three days a week? I'll let Ian type his own answer, but while we wait for that, I, I have heard of agents saying that they're, they're open house ads, exactly, that I'm only trying to drive people to an event or a location or something. Um, so I don't know if that's Ian's case, but it, it, let's speak to that one first, and, and let's see if that's what he comes back with. Uh, what do you think of that? Of, of yeah, open I mean, open, open house ads are a different animal because people aren't thinking about their Sundays on Wednesday. <laughs> so if it's an open house or something that's timely or a just listed, you know, maybe you only run that for a couple days when it first hits the market. But for an open house ad, it makes sense for something that is more general. If you're just trying to say budget, I would I guess maybe I would understand it. But by turning it on and off like that, like you're actually doing a little bit of harm to the optimization. Like you take a little bit of harm every time you pause that ad set. And yes, always pause at the ad set level. Never ever pause a campaign. Just don't do it. Just don't. You're screwing up all your optimization. There's a free nugget so, for you tonight. So Ian's uh, answer is mostly that would just be the most ideal time people would be spending on Facebook looking at real estate instead of spending $5 a day throughout the week, only three to four days a week, didn't spend $20 to $40. So it sounds like it's budget optimization, if I may uh, summarize what Ian's saying here. And Ian, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, so what, what do you make of that? Yeah, I hear you. And it, and it actually is a, a technique that's taught pretty commonly. Um, but my, my struggle with that is that my clients actually see more leads during the week because people are busy on the weekends. I think, I think that's a really good illustration of making assumptions and setting up your ad campaign based on an assumption. The, another and then example if you set up that, that is you can't test again automatically exclude under 25 year olds because they're assuming they're never going to buy a house. I was 22 when I bought my first house. I started talking about it when I was about 19. You can't be my agent because you, <laughs> you made an assumption that I couldn't buy a house. Um, there's certain ad creatives that people will exclude women or they'll exclude seniors or they'll, um, you know, make an assumption that nobody's going to like that picture of that house. You would be amazed at the crazy photos that have worked on ad campaigns because when you un turn off your own programming and you let Facebook give you the data, you're going to know which days of the week within a couple of weeks, you're going to know which days of the week to lean into. Uh, maybe you're getting tons of leads from 6am to 10am. Sure. Run them during 6am to 10am. I mean, that's, 
don't assume that from the start. That's part of why my question was, did you run campaigns that you got that data? Because sometimes it is true. Uh, it's not always though. So I would encourage you to, for a couple of weeks, if you have the budget, to really run it Monday through Friday and just leave it alone and then go back and look at your days of the week and see, you know, are you hitting that sweet spot on certain days of the week? Um, Cause you might actually be missing a lot of opportunity during the week because there are so, because what might probably happening is that there are so many agents running their just listeds and their open houses on the weekend. Your cost is actually probably higher than it would be Monday through Thursday. So you just said uh, Friday, did you mean that or, or did you mean to say seven days? No, I meant that. You actually okay. may be getting your leads cheaper during the weekdays because there's so many other agents running weekend-only ads. So this is a total reversal from what Ian's doing now of doing weekends only or end of the week plus into the weekend. That's what you would suggest just to try it out, get some testing data and see which works. And that could be totally wrong in your market again. You know what I mean? Like it's it's that's part of why real estate ads are so hard is because we come into these groups and try to give best practices. But right. until you run your ads and your market to your audience, you know, it's, it's a testing process, but I would definitely encourage you to, to, to try to unprogram some of those assumptions because Facebook will give you that data. It's going to tell you whether men or women like this ad. It's going to tell you which photo. One of the first ads that I ran for my agency was a video of my daughter, my little toddler daughter. She was screaming at the cat. And I got so much crap from my agency peers because they were like, this is not going to convert. It was the highest converting ad I've ever had. And I just thought it was funny. And I was like, hey, let's run an ad on this and see what happens. And you guys have seen enough of my personality. Like by the time people got on the phone with me, like they got it, like that I was kind of a goofball. And <laughs> it worked, you know, I, if I had made that assumption, like, oh, people are gonna think it's clickbait. No, they thought it was hilarious. So, you know, the weirdest photos sometimes make the best ads. If you made an assumption, they only want to see a pretty perfect house you might lose an opportunity to really convert and, and, and bring in some good leads. So does that make sense? Test, guys? test, 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 test is what you're saying. Test, 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 test. That's my favorite thing it. about Facebook is that there's always more to test to get it yeah. right. All right, so what about, what about the fact that ads are annoying? By definition, ads are terrible and everyone hates them and your job every day is to annoy people. How do you sleep at night? Yeah, mm. yeah, you drink that water and you think about that answer. You know I'm right. <laughs> um, would you ever watch the Super Bowl without expecting to see ads? That's I Bowl. stream the Super Bowl and don't see any ads, so. All right, sassy pants. <laughs> you go to Times Square and expect to not see a billboard. You don't pay admission to Times Square, but it gets, all of those buildings get paid for somehow. Uh, Facebook is free. Facebook is free for users. That's why it's the most powerful place to be on earth. The reason we're on this call right now is because Facebook is free and we get to connect with what we're over nine, almost 900 now, fabulous real estate agents from all over the United States. We are live chatting with them right now and it is free. The reason it is free is because we pay for ads. I don't think they're annoying because the only ads I see are pliable to me. I see toddler ads. I see other marketing agencies, which is great for me. It's market research. <laughs> I see things about running. I see things about football because I'm a Chicago Bears fan. Go Bears. Um, you know, those ads are pliable to me. And that's why Facebook ads are so powerful. That's why they're taking over the stick and earth. I, there are very few agencies in the world that aren't at least thinking about doing ads. Even if they're not doing them, they're like, man, there's opportunity here. Uh, you know, people are building e-commerce business without putting a dollar anywhere else. They pay for Facebook ads because you know what? If I'm selling a product to 25 year old mothers of girls, I can find 25 year old mothers of girls. And if I've got to see ads, I'd rather them be things that are pliable and helpful to me. So for an agent, if you come from a mindset of serving and what can I use those ads to give that that Facebook will reward you for that because your ads are going to be good. They want to show good ads. They're going to reward that. Uh, ads that people are engaging with and that they're not seeing Jason, 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 and it's all crap. It's going to annoy Facebook and they're not going to reward you for that. So they're yeah, not, annoying. Crap. they're actually very helpful. And if you are building your ads from that mindset, you're going to build good ads and you're going to build ads that bring value to people. All right. What you got, Ian? There's, well, before we move on, Ian, there's an aspect to this too, that, if there are gonna be ads there, you wanna make sure they're yours and not your competitors, right? Oh, absolutely. They're gonna get shown either way. So yeah, yeah. better you than somebody okay. else, right? 
So but wanting to get super high qualified leads by only running one ad versus being a lot more strategic with posting a short video about an interesting topic and then retargeting people that watch that video and try to convert them with a retargeting ad. It seems this way you can cast a larger net uh, with the first ad to try to figure out who you need to retarget. Um, is this really interested in uh, retargeting is what you have to offer? So that whole big question of, of retargeting versus, you know, I don't know, specific ads. This is definitely not my, I try to paraphrase what Ian's saying here, but uh, you know, how do you, how do you respond to that? Can you, can you reread like the first sentence of the, the first couple sentences of that? You were breaking up a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. What's your take on agents wanting to get super high qualified leads by only running one ad versus being a lot more strategic by posting a short video with an interesting topic and then retargeting people that watch that video and try to convert them with the retargeting ad. I think the harder you make it for people, the higher quality your leads are going to be when they come through. But you as an advertiser have to weigh quality with quantity. That's a choice you have to make. Uh, if you run, you know, we, we call it your top of funnel, which is your biggest net, your middle of funnel, which is retargeting your, the people who engaged up here, right? So the middle of funnel, these people have now engaged with you twice. Your offer is going to be different down here in the middle, whereas this is just check out this cool video. In most cases, it's like something a little click. I hate to use the term, but a little clip baby that's just engage with me so that I can retarget you. Like I think people are getting smarter. They realize that's what's going on because all of a sudden I'm seeing ads for you every day. Um, you know, up here, if you were to run this ad up here, you probably would get more leads, but they're not necessarily going to be the same quality leads because they're only responding to one level of engagement. This layer down here, if you're doing it properly, that offer here is going to only really catch the really qualified hook. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if any of you guys are fishers, but if you throw the right lure, you're going to catch the fish that you want. Uh, you're not going to throw... I don't know a ton about fishing, but I do know that much. There's a whole box full of different things that you can throw and it's going to catch particular kinds of fish. So, you know, for quality, yeah, the deeper your funnel goes, the better off you're going to be, you know, and then you run that final, all right, look, <laughs> you've engaged with me three times now, seriously, let me sell your house. Like, you know, you layer that out properly, you're going to catch the really qualified things. But what you have to be careful of, Ian, is when you're thinking about your cost per acquisition, it actually includes both of those layers. So maybe you got this up here for a dollar and this down here for $5. You know, a lot of times these leads end up being cheaper, but you have to add both numbers. So if ultimately you got 10 leads out of both layers, you have to divide the whole number by 10, not just this middle layer. Hopefully that makes sense. Did that make sense to you, TJ? It did. And I, I'm, I'm rereading Ian's. Uh... So ultimately the campaign is an overall cost, not just the individual layer so i'm rereading ian's question as i'm listening to your answer and uh i think then you would come down on the side of the retargeting uh the video that, that he's talking about that you're gonna if you can engage with them multiple times your cost for acquisition might go up but the quality is going to go way up also and so that would be the recommended strategy yeah if you've got the budget for it because every time you open a new ad set a new campaign you're adding budget so mm -hmm. that's not necessarily an option that everybody has but if you're able to do that uh, it can be a really effective strategy. And if you, you know, our obstacle for all of us online, you know, TJ and I are both marketing professionals that try to engage with people online. Like our clients are all over the country, right? The biggest challenge is establishing credibility with those people and getting them to know, like, and trust you. It's hard to do online when they're sitting there with a little piece of plastic and metal or at their laptop, you know? So, a lot of times that top and funnel kind of warms them up and gets them listening to you talk or, you know, so you just give them something of value without expecting a lead in return. Uh, so you've got a little more warm fuzzy that then when they see Ooh, Ian, that guy and then you ask for their lead capture, you might have a little warmer audience for that. Um, a little warm can go a long way online because you're like getting lost in the newsfeed, right? But they're going to see your name again, drop in value, and they're going to be like, ooh, thanks, Ian. Do you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes, sometimes if you do the lead capture right at the top of the funnel, it can be a little like going on a first date and shaking their hand and then trying to kiss them. <laughs> you, you <laughs> some, of that, some of that trust building where you get to go then ask for the kiss. But if you've already had that top of funnel there, you get to the middle of funnel. Okay, you're you're at the end of the date or you're on the second date, and you're like, all right, maybe I get to kiss them at the start of the date, right? Um, 
it's it's a it's a little more advanced strategy, but you know it's very 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 powerful. Uh, or you can take particular pages in your website and retarget them there. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do that. If the people that are downloading your buyer guide on your website retarget them with listings. You know, those type of strategies are really really powerful, and it's something that is completely unique to Facebook. Completely unique to Facebook. Uh, I mean, there there's other retargeting out there with AdWorks and all these other things. But in the way that you can do them in Facebook, it's they're the only tool that you can do it in that specific way. Yeah. All right. So the last one that I came up with, uh, my complaint here for, for PBC, is that it never ends. That if, I, if I'm in a market uh, that dictates a lead is going to cost me, let's say, $20, uh, it's going to be 20. That's only going to go up. It's going to be $20 today, $20 tomorrow, and $20 a year from now until the market gets more competitive. And now it's $25. And that's, it's never going to go down. The fact that I have set up this campaign and it's been uh, earning leads for me successfully for a day, a week, a month, a year does not provide me with any significant discount. Maybe my quality score goes up to use a, a, a Google AdWords term. I don't know if uh, Facebook has the same term or not. Uh, my quality score might go up and my cost per lead might go down a little bit that way, sliding scale, but the, the market is with the market. I don't ever get to see that cost go down based on length of time pain and the success that I've had with it. Uh, that's not necessarily true. Uh, okay. you're, uh, we, it's relevant score. It's, it's a similar metric, but it's a relevant score in Facebook land uh, that determines, you know, your, your ad sucks or your ad is awesome. Uh, uh, over time, because you are a rock star Facebook marketer and you are optimizing into success, your cost per lead should go down. Uh, it's going to be due to the fact that, okay, so let's say I was looking at a campaign today and I was looking at the results by age group. And I looked at 25, I think it's 34. I was getting clicks at, we'll say X. And then in the 45 to 54 age group, I was getting leads at 2X. Okay, I can choose to scale into the 1X and scale that back. And it's going to lower my overall cost per lead. So then the next week I'm looking at, okay, which, at which time of day should I be running this? And I, do you know what I mean? Like there are things you can do to keep that number going down over time. Um, but you are correct. It's going to cost $20 and this cost cost $20 and that number is only going to go up. So from that standpoint, yes, but I don't know too many agents that wouldn't be stoked to spend 20 bucks for a $15,000 commission. <laughs> uh, you know, as lead generation sources go, it's pretty reasonable. Uh, assuming you're not throwing your money in the toilet, doing it, uh, in irresponsible ways with your budget. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's a matter of, Yes, there is incremental cost and the cost will go on forever. Like you will never be able to run a Facebook post for free or Facebook, excuse me, ad for free. Uh, if you're looking for free, build a great audience on your Facebook page and, you know, run it from there. You know, it's going to cost you money to build that audience. <laughs> but once it's built, you can organically build a relationship with people and, and, and zero in on that 5,000 people instead of your home market. You certainly have that choice, but from a paid standpoint, yeah, there's going to be cost forever, but it's still a hell of a good ROI uh, when you get it right. Yeah, it's a little uh, preview of coming attractions for next week, too, talking about this switch from paid into organic eventually. So uh, yeah. I don't want to say too much about that because I want to have this fight all over again next week and give, uh, give you the chance. <laughs> you to... took it easy on me, TJ. I feel like I held my own pretty well. What can I say? You have good answers. It's, you know, obviously PPC doesn't suck and, and we throw a little bit of hype in there for, uh, for fun. I think everybody could see that. But uh, what can I say? You, three, you may have good answers, and uh, you know, obviously, the uh, the value speaks for itself. So uh, now we get to hear a little bit of the, you know, some of the 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 real answers and the right answers, I guess, from an industry expert such as yourself uh, to when anybody has any objection. Oh, I don't do PVC because it's too expensive, or because I don't have the time to be managing that stuff every day, or I don't understand it's too hard for me, or whatever the case may be. Well, now you know what the real answer to those objections are uh every time and uh, and i think that you put them very well and what can i say you've convinced me I, I am not good at ppc i have tried uh more in google than on facebook um but my hat is off to you because it is it is a world that i have never really been able to feel comfortable in yeah it's just it's kind of a different part of the brain than than the world that you do uh it's yeah. it's go forth and find the people you want to do business with it's just a very different right. approach um and i feel like i should say because you just brought it up 98% of the things that I said are, tonight were specific to Facebook paid advertising. 
Uh, we're using the term PPC a little loosely here because most people associate PPC with Google, uh, that term, because uh, that's they were you know they were the granddaddy of it. Uh, but your approaches in Google in Google Ads are very 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 different. Uh, we didn't really cover them tonight. Uh, it is similar in concept in let's be specific and find the people that want us, but it's a little bit different in the way that you go about thinking through what to add, what to run as an ad. You're looking more for volume there than you are for like, it's just a different, it's a very different uh, approach. And someday we'll get somebody who's a Google PPC expert in here to drop some knowledge on you guys. Cause I don't think it's TJ or either one <laughs> uh, to really, to, to speak to that at a high level. I would prefer to have an expert in here. So we'll see if we can't get one of those yeah. people. There, there's some crossover, I think, uh, but you know, as soon as you move from Facebook into Google, there is some crossover between the the paid side, the PPC side, and the organic side. Uh, you know, which is the world that I live in. So, the, and and like I said, we'll talk more about this next week. But uh, the crossover there is basically mindset. Where on Facebook, you can basically reach people by who they are, and maybe mm -hmm. sort of what they are, if that makes any sense. Uh, mm -hmm. As soon as you move into Google, be it paid or organic, you have no idea who these folks are. None. Correct. All you know about them is what they want. And so now you're talking more about a mindset shift, uh, you know, rather than say identity. Uh, we talk a lot about intention in, uh, in the SEO world and there's a lot of bleed over from uh, into PPC with intention. So we can talk more about that next week. But only other thing I wanted to throw in there was that Jason uh, had one more comment that kind of got lost in the shuffle here uh, where he said that Facebook, where are we here? Um, uh, he left already, but Facebook is the only platform that delivers relevant ads to him. Uh, and that's one of the ones I would love to, to speak to a little bit next week, um, you know, more so this week, but, uh, that, that sounds like an opportunity to me if you are a Google expert, because uh, I would agree that the Facebook ads are way more relevant. Um, and you know, it's not really a mystery, right? I know so much more about the individual on Facebook than I do about in, uh, than I do in Google. So it's easier to find relevance. Uh, as the advertiser, I get all that, but that sounds like an opportunity for the Google folks to be like, cool, you know, the most Google ads suck. Let's, let's fix them. You know? Um, so maybe we can talk a little bit how that applies to organic also when we get in here next week. Um, so, and then actually I missed one from Ian too. Also the very first ad you run can be, uh, can just be a video and an ad for video views, which are very inexpensive to get video views. Is that correct? He asks. And I think this is leading into the retargeting, uh, question. Yeah, asking about sorry, Ian. Yes. Uh, the nice thing about those video ads is really before you figure everything else out about your campaign, you can start those running and it'll start recording your audience. Uh, so, you you know, you start a, a retargeting layer, like an audience recording. That's people that are watching that video. So people aren't going to thumb stop unless they are at least somewhat interested in what you have to say. So it starts recording that audience of a slightly warmer group of people. Uh, so then when you are ready to knock it out of the park with the middle of the funnel, uh, you'll already have that audience running. So yeah, video video views can be really cheap, and that's because Facebook really likes them. They're they're good content for their website, <laughs> so they want to reward us and encourage us to keep using video because it's more engaging for their users. So right. yeah, sorry we missed you earlier, Ian, but yes, you are yeah, spot good on. Question. Good question. Excellent. All right, does that do it? That's all I got. I came out swinging, you, uh, man. Yeah, Just get are ready you for successfully this. successfully punching bagged? I don't know. There we go. go. Kind of hard to duke it out with Facebook ads right now. I'm just saying. You got enough. You, <laughs> well, you got we shall, battle ahead, man. we shall see. All right, cool. Listen, <laughs> all right, uh, Jason, Ian, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, thanks for, for all the questions. And uh, a few others earlier today uh, posted a couple. Voted in Courtney's uh, cheating, lying, dirty, sneaky poll earlier today. <laughs> it was a typo, I swear. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, uh, all right, cool. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, and we'll be back next week with, uh, turning me into the punching bag and learning why SEO is just vastly superior to paid ads in every way. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. We will see you guys next week. Thanks so much. Go watch some football. Good night.